the issues. Pronunciation. No identifiable native speaker. No recognized world standard. Tension. Tom MacArthur says, It's hard to conceive of a unified spoken standard for world English, and difficult to decide what to teach as a model, and how wide a range of material to make available to students for the purposes of listening comprehension. And I agree. Some of these examples have similar written standards, but the spoken varieties of so-called native English, even within each country, are plethoric. Received pronunciation and general American are actually only spoken by a small percentage of Brits and Yanks. And then there's all the non-native varieties of spoken English. Globish was created in 2004 by a Frenchman, Jean-Paul Nerrière, a former second-in-command of the IBM Corporation, as a result to his international communications and travels. Grzega says there are many problems with Globish, like incorrect pronunciation and grammar, translation errors from English into French and vice versa, the misreporting of the function of schwa, and the absence of the use of IPA. ELF is a moniker for English as lingua franca, first applied by Jennifer Jenkins and Barbara Seidelhofer about eight years ago, and is a clever twist on EFL, or English as a foreign language. Although Gradle gives such an impressive quote in his 2007 English Next book, he gave zero information about ELF's methods and materials, unfortunately. Many people seem to be joining the ELF bandwagon without actually being affiliated with anything other than a concept. Also, it occurs to me that to teach deliberately incorrect English, which seems to be the intent of ELFsters, could be counterproductive to comprehension. Because what will happen when we get new altered versions of these new diluted versions? Unintelligibility, that's what. Along with the cute and catchy name, its promoters seem to intend to create a new standard English for non-native speakers, but this is clearly unrealistic. Also, teaching incorrect grammar like he do and how long time guarantees that when L speakers do communicate with native English speakers, the native speakers are likely to judge the ELF's English poorly. Basic Global English was put forth by Joaquim Grisega in 2006 and is currently being taught to German elementary school students. He says of grammar, Empirical studies by Seidelhofer and others show that violations against native standard English grammar rarely impede communicative success. In general, BGE should only offer the most basic and most frequent English grammatical patterns. BGE does not take native standard English as a model, but also includes the variants of successful lingua franca, also known as the Lingua Franca core, interestingly enough, pioneered by Jenkins and Seidelhofer. I created this equation to help simplify learning English. C equals S plus R, communication equals sound plus rhythm. That is to say, comprehensible spoken communication is made up of pronunciation, also called segmentals, plus rhythm, referring to the suprasegmental features of syllables, stress, and intonation, also called prosody. C equals S plus 1 plus R is true because 
If you change the pronunciation of a word a little bit, but keep the rhythm, we still have understanding. And if you change the rhythm a little bit, but not the sound, we still have understanding. But if you change both the sound and the rhythm, I think we lose comprehensibility. Also, if you change the sound by a large degree, but not the rhythm, or if you change the rhythm a lot and not the pronunciation, and of course if you change both, then intelligibility is lost. And once again, we have communication breakdown. My intention is that for virtually any English student and teacher, this equation could be a useful tool of understanding. Simplification is the key. Easily understandable, C equals S plus R could provide motivation and help students gain confidence in their English speaking ability. The katakana was created as a pronunciation guide for all foreign words, but applying Japanese phonics to English changes both the sound and the rhythm of most words. So, for example, the word McDonald's becomes makudonaludo, and my wife's traditional Japanese name, pronounced lie, is spelled R-I-E. English is said to be a stress-timed language, wherein the sentences dogs chase cats and the dogs chased the cats takes about the same time to say. Japanese is a syllable-timed language, wherein each phoneme is given equal amounts of time. So that final sentence in katakana becomes itto lukusu hato auto saido and I've actually had students say this to me. Although there is some debate over the stress and syllable functions of language, Alai and Greenberg found, by recording Japanese and English speech and running it through modulation spectrum and frequency histogram analysis, that Despite broad differences between the phonological patterns of Japanese and English, the temporal properties of their spoken form are remarkably similar, sharing many syllabic timings. So it occurs to me that by looking at language from a similarities perspective rather than differences one, it could benefit everyone involved. And this is where C equals S plus R could really help. To finish Abercrombie's quote, because the rhythm causes the weakening or centralization of vowels quite regardless of the accent of a speaker of conventional native English. When all the theoretical chalk dust settles, we still have to deal with face-to-face -face communication which is not just about pronunciation and rhythm, of course, but includes manners, self and other awareness, and losing the need to be right, all of which will only aid in comprehensibility, among other pleasant outcomes, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't that be fair? <laughs>